So, you know, blending layers, how do you, how do you put 25 blend modes into a chapter? And how do you show people what they do? And there's that, that example you see in every single book out there, which is, you know, this is two images blended together, multiply, screen, and this and that. And for me, excuse me, uh, for me, I kind of just started thinking about what are, the, what are the blend modes that I use the most? And so why would I show you any of the other ones? So really, there's three or four blend modes that we use the most. And let's take a look here. You've got multiply. You take a really, really simple example of I could create a new layer, OK? And I could take my gradient tool and just, just draw a gradient across the screen. All right, so you've got this gradient on a blank layer. And if I change the blend mode to multiply, that, that, that demonstration, that little exercise, kind of helps give you a little bit of insight into what these things start to do. And where it helps is, is now when the next project comes along, you're not cycling through 25 different blend modes to see which one you want. You can very quickly go to the one you want because you start to, to understand what they're going to do. So multiply. Think of it this way. Multiply will drop out all the white, will keep black, and then it's going to kind of do a transition of everything in between and make it a little bit darker. It's like taking two slides, stacking them up on top of each other. Okay? Then if I change that and did screen, screen's the opposite of multiply. So screen is going to keep all your white. It's going to drop anything that's black. And then again, anything that's in between, it's going to kind of make a little bit brighter. All right? And then the last one that we use a lot, there's actually two, overlay and soft light. Overlay takes the black, makes it blacker, takes the white and makes it whiter. And then that, that, that stuff that's gray right in the middle, that's going to get wiped out. It's going to be transparent. You're not going to see it. Think of it as contrast. So if we started and we looked at the layer blend mode here, we've got all these ones up top here that kind of darken things. And then we've got the ones in the middle here that kind of lighten things. And you can tell the first one, lighten, darken. And then we got the ones over here that kind of add contrast. And I taught a class yesterday, and we, we had a little joke. Uh, you know, the ones down here are the useless ones, OK? <laughs> I'm not totally useless. They have their uses. It's just very, very few and far between do we find ourselves going to those lower ones. And you know, so one of the ways that you can kind of think about Photoshop is if it's buried at the bottom of the list, it's probably one of those things that you're not going to use too often. All right, so filters, blend modes, anything that's buried at the way bottom of a menu or a list is, uh, is one of those things that we just we don't find ourselves going to too much. All right, so in this example here, let's take that layer and, and put it in the trash. I'm going to duplicate the background layer, Command or Control J. And the photo's too light, right? So what blend mode makes it darker? Multiply. If I change it to multiply, it makes everything darker. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not good. In this example here, the face has got a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark. So that's where you just grab your eraser tool, just hit the letter E, and just kind of erase that away. So you understand that there's a layer on top, there's a layer on bottom. When we erase from the layer on the top, we're going to poke through and we're going to show what's on the bottom. We move on to screen. And you can do the same thing. Duplicate the layer, Command or Control J, and then change the blend mode to screen. And you could see before and after. If it's a little too much, eraser tool. and just erase it away. And it's going to start showing you the layer that's underneath. Now, we get into 
soft light and overlay. And this is, um, again, I, I taught a class yesterday, and, and I, I told the story that my wife does not like to use Photoshop. It always works that way, you know? It's like whatever you do, it's like your, your wife or your spouse is as far away from it. And she, I don't want to do that. I don't want to open my photos. Give me one click, something. And so one of the things that I told her was, all right, honey, when you get the photo, just open it up. She's like, but it looks good. I'm like, I know, but just try this. Just one little quick layer. She's like, I don't want to do a layer. I'm like, it's one. So photo looks good. Happens a lot with point and shoot cameras where things will look a little bit washed out. And you don't even see it until you come down here and maybe you try overlay. And it instantly, it kind of just gives the photo a little bit more, a little bit more punch. If overlay's too punchy, then try soft light. And what did they both do? Remember that gradient example? They take the blacks, they make them blacker, and they take the whites and they make them whiter. And you could see overlay or soft light. Overlay is just kind of a punchier version than soft light. All right, so let's delete that one. Now, where does it work well in other circumstances is old photos. Biggest thing that old photos will suffer from is just being faded. All right, and there's a ton of things that you can go in there to do and try to fix them, but make a new layer, change the blend mode to overlay, and it's almost instantaneous. You don't really have to do any more to it. Okay? However, take it a step further. And some different ways that we can use blend modes here, we could start to blend multiple uh, layers together, is somebody gives you a logo. And so I, I don't know if where you guys are from, but these like 2% mortgage companies are everywhere. You know, sell your house for $10, no closing costs. So you get a logo from somebody and they say, yeah, can you put the logo onto a photo for me? All right. Make sure you can see both images here and just use your move tool and click and drag from one to the other. And it comes in too big. Uh, we'll go ahead and free transform and I'll scale it down. All right, we'll put that up top here. And just kind of to yourself, think about what I'd said before. Uh, so what blend mode's gonna knock out the white, keep the black? Multiply. And as you move it around, it shows up anywhere, okay? So instead of sitting there and taking that logo and trying to select out the white and delete it and do everything like that, just change it to multiply. I'm going to do a little trick here, is let's invert this. So if I just go uh, image adjustments, and I go down to invert. So invert just takes the, takes the whites, makes it black, takes the black, makes it white. All right, so now client gives you a different kind of a logo. Same thing holds true. You know, what blend mode would you use to now dump out the black? Screen. Okay, and now you can move that around. So different ways that you can start to use blend modes when you get into graphic design and graphics. Helps you take a lot of time away from trying to get in there and trying to select things and just remove them.